this carving here. Very nice. Alright, take a photo of this. Yeah. I haven't come across it yet. No. Anyway. Bloodstone. Yeah. Never heard of it. Ah, bro. Oh, it's okay. The best one be man, man to ask would be the man in the cottage. Good morning, everyone. It's Saturday morning, 24th of February. Today, I'm going to take the local link bus just outside of Wexford town. It's about one kilometer from Castle Bridge. Castle Bridge is uh, about five kilometers to Wexford town. To give you an idea of what it's like, I'll put the link up here, show you the little map. And today I'm gonna take the bus. We're gonna go to Edenvale. It's a beautiful little waterfall, a nice little walk. It's, a, it's about two and a half, three kilometer walk in the forest. There's a few historical secrets about the place and I'll talk about it when we're going up there. And then we're going to walk to Castle Bridge, which is a small town. And I'll tell you a little interesting fact about Castle Bridge. It's actually the birthplace of the founding of the Guinness Book of Records. And I'll tell you all about that. So now I'm just going to walk up to the, uh, the Apple Greens uh, petrol station here. There's a local link bus, which should be coming in about 15, 20 minutes. And I'll take that up to uh, Edenville and then we'll get started on today's adventure. So stay with me. So I couldn't sign to find a sign at the Apple Green at the uh, service station. So I decided to walk a little bit further to the Maldron, which is about a 12 minute walk. Um, it's where I usually take off the bus to go to uh, Dublin. Most of the times you saw me uh, take that bus. It was always in the middle of the night. This is the first time I'm gonna be getting on in the morning there. So we're almost there and wait for the bus. everyone so that was the little quick bus ride it took like maybe maybe 10 minutes not even so here we are there's a sign here a little worn for wear basically you can see Edenvale welcome to Edenvale please beware you enter the Vale at your own risk activities may cause trips slips and falls Please do not litter. Yeah, we never want littering. Now, while we're walking up here with a few little things. Oh, geez, there's little... Looks like steps there, but let's stay on the main path. So I'll tell you a little bit of the history behind for Edenvale. Uh, in 1931, there was a murder taking place here. Uh, Elizabeth Rick was murdered by an employee of hers, um, Henry Carty. He um, was promising a wage increase and he didn't get it and he lost his mind a bit and killed her and he later confessed. And also, there's a bloodstone here supposedly found somewhere. We're going to try to look for that 
And that goes back to the 15th century when a priest was escaping away on horseback. And he fell and he died. And this spot is all red, supposedly from when the priest fell. I don't know where this place is, but just like an opening here. Um, and then also it's known for ghosts. A uh, fairy hill ghost. It comes in a form of a woman. So that's a little bit of history about Edenville. Well, look at this carving here. Very nice. A couple of fairy doors on the walls, and uh, the trees. And I think I've gone off pass of it, but we're going to walk around, see if there's anything interesting around these woods, and maybe we'll see a ghost. Some old tree stumps here. I think that's pretty much a dead end here. Yeah, we'll get back on trail. Getting back onto the main track. This is the first time I've been out here too, so it's another advantage of having the channel is you get to explore your local area too. This is literally six kilometers outside of town. It's very pretty. People come here to run, walk their dogs. Hi. So the, it's supposedly about two and a half kilometer loop, which should take about 20 to 30 minutes, they say. And they have little clearings on the sides. Like that's where we were on the other side and sort of, you could come along into the wood part and walk down, see? But that's where you have to watch the footing. You can be very slippery. The green's starting to come. We're hitting into spring in Ireland. Once it's all fully bloomed, it'd be walk walking in a, a tunnel of trees. Okay. Now we come to a fork. Hmm. Let's see. Go to the left first, maybe. Don't know where that one takes us. We can go take a look at it later. Well, I think this was the main one. There's some steps around for the good around the gate. They used to have a gate here. Welcome to Edenvale. I can hear water. I can see water down there. It's a beautiful day today. I'm not sure what the temperature is right now, but there's a little archway there. And then water coming here. Let's keep following it. So anyway, as we're walking on here, I may as well tell you about the booking of the uh, my second trip coming up. Obviously I'm going to Azerbaijan in April, so that's quickly coming up. But I took the uh, 
got a good fight uh, deal to go to Pakistan. So I booked that and then I started applying the process of the visa. The visa is a little bit trickier than I thought. So what you have to do is you have to actually have a local person vouch for you, send you a letter or a tour guide or tour company. Um, and then you have to actually have all your itinerary planned out. So they actually have to know where you are at all times. So I had to actually book all my hotels when I'm in Lahore and it's Islamabad and then back to Lahore um, and tell them basically every place and have copies of it. And I had to pay 50 euros to um, a tour guide to prepare a whole bunch of documents. And it was quite a lot of work when I seen what he had sent me. So it was worth the 50 euros. Now you can also take tours of companies and they'll do the whole thing for you. But because I'm uh, going on my own as a solo traveler uh, and vlogging uh, my experiences, so I had to prepare all that stuff, send it to them. So I had to send them a copy of my flight uh, details, um, the itinerary. I had to send them all the booking confirmation from booking.com, but like the two page document of each one. So I've tried to vary it. Like I wanted to wait and when I get back from Islamabad into a horse, they had something else, but didn't have an option. So I'm going to have four different hotels staying in while I'm in Pakistan. So you get to see what they're like. They range from different prices, but they're all, you know, fairly reasonable compared to what we get in Ireland here. Um, just through some water and some rocks coming up. Yeah, so I finally got that sent off. Supposedly it could take a few weeks to get the approval, um, but fingers crossed it's all done. Now the visa itself for Pakistan is very cheap. It was 35 US dollars, so it was like 32 euros. So all in all, it cost me 82, you know, so, but the flight was really a good deal. Um, I was checking out, checking out. It was always around the 800 mark, but I got it for 630 and it's with Qatar Airlines there and back. So really happy with that. Um, they're a good, good airline. So I'm looking forward to the Pakistan. Now I'm starting to brush up on my Urdu. Well, brush up, like learn some Urdu. I don't have any, but the, the one thing I did notice is the numbers are very similar to the, for Nepali uh, um, numbers. So that part was a little bit easier. So Shukriya is thank you as opposed to the Danyabad, so I have to get that right. And also, Assalamu Alaikum is like the greetings. And it's a very Pakistani one. And so I'm doing the uh, studying on the old uh, YouTube. Uh, I have a book and I also have the app, the Lingo app. So I'm trying to develop that. So hopefully I'll be able to order a few things while we're in Pakistan. Let me know if uh, you're looking forward to that one. But we have Azerbaijan first. And that's a whole other adventure. Oh, that's lovely. That's a potential thumbnail right there. Simon says be born again before you dead. Wonder where the red rock or the bloodstone is. Like could be anywhere really. Mention in the comment section if you know where it is. A lot of fallen trees. Like you could be riding a horse up there and it came down. Maybe we'll ask the gentleman here. See if he knows where it is. Very nice. There's some little doggies, doggos. Hello. Do, do you know where the bloodstone is? The bloodstone. No, never heard of it. The bloodstone. The bloodstone. Yeah. I've never heard of it. No, it's. Goes back to the 15th century. It was a priest that was trying to escape. 
Right. On horseback. <laughs> yeah. And he fell. Yeah. And died. Yeah. And the place where he he there's died, water. supposedly it's a red stone or something oh. in the water somewhere like that. And it's no supposed idea. to mark. No idea. No. no. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. We'll keep going. So two local people didn't know. But that will not stop us. We will persevere. Here's someone else. Oh. Here's the water, right? I also have no internet connection, so I wouldn't be able to Google it. Maybe this gentleman knows. Here's a nice little bridge. Hello. Do you know where the bloodstone is? I'm only new here myself. Like bloodstone. Yeah. Uh, I haven't heard of that now. Uh, yeah, the bloodstone. It supposedly marks the spot of a Catholic priest in the 15th century. Oh. He was uh, trying to get away from somebody, and he was riding horseback, and he fell off, oh, nice. landed, and supposedly the place where it marks his death, the the rock or stone, is red. Oh, and that's his. I haven't come across it yet. No. Anyway. All right. There's some people up there walking dogs, they might yeah. be more No, local. I just saw them and they, oh, did, like they didn't have a clue either. <laughs> yeah. So, that's the thing about Google, you know, Google tells you a lot of stuff. But yeah, yeah, that's it, yeah. Doesn't it? Anyways. No, I just hope there's a nice, there's a couple of waterfalls and a, an old yeah. mill house up there. There, there is a nice waterfall on the side of the water yeah. there too. There's a couple of big ones just over Just the keep on going. Yeah, yeah. Alright. <laughs> if you see any red stones, let me know. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here's some more people. Keep looking for one. Now we could have been on some of the smaller little streams that we were when we first walked in, or you know when that path went down to the right, could have been down there too. So I will keep going. Maybe they'll know. We'll ask them. These are two different people with two dogs. Hello. Do you know where the bloodstone is? Bloodstone. Yeah. Never heard of it. Ah, Bruno. Oh, it's okay. Bruno. Yeah. Bruno. It's supposed to be a. Marks, it's a, uh, it's a, Bro. it's a, Bro, stop it. Stop it. that's okay. It probably smells my dog. Yeah. Um, it's supposed to be a place where in the 15th century, a priest was riding, getting away on horseback. He fell down and died. And the stone where he died marks the spot. It's supposed to be, it's a red stone. Oh, up here. In here. And I'm, I'm looking. Could be in any part yeah. Here, Figure the, it would. The best one the man, man to ask would be the man in the cottage. Yeah. In the cottage, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. He, he would know everything. everything. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And where's is where's he? For, you go. If you go down to the end and there's a left turn. Yeah. He's just up that walk and the cottage is on the left. You can go this way either. Yeah. yeah you could go around. Yeah, I'm gonna the keep. Whole loop yeah, that's and what I'm gonna do anyways. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'll ask him. Yeah, All right. he'd know. Thank you. So we're 0 for three so far. So we're going to do the whole loop anyway, so... Oh, here we go. Water is really thickening up here. And they even have a life preserver here. Oh, this is nice. Okay. We'll keep on going on this path. Like I said, it's supposed to be a half hour walk to do the loop, so it can't be too bad. Now it's a little slippery here. So you have to watch your feeding. Oh, you get a nice review up here. Watch the Whoa, very mucky. Oh yeah, here's some more nice. It's 
see any red stones? Keep going. Up the stairs we go. It's nice and fenced in though. You could use the handrail so you don't slip. Because if it was wet and mossy, your footing would be very slippery. Quest for the bloodstone. There's a pump. Pump is generating some hydro power. Oh, look at the old mill. Really nice. And no bridge there. Let's take a look. Okay, take a photo of this. stairs a bit here and there's a little muddy path very muddy path and this is what I guess I mean you have to watch your footings and they're not responsible for it I have my hiking shoes but I didn't bring my boots okay I'm gonna need my uh, hands to get up this the shoes are a little messy um, very 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 wet Very slippery. Beautiful view though. It was worth the little walk. Very slippery, stone, watery, wet, muddy. R.I.P. Baby Caroline. Well, that's a sad story. It's a beautiful view here. It's very nice. come down here welcome to Edendale so the nurse I'm here so we're feeling very welcome there's the sun on the water and on this side Another little bridge right there. You see any red stones? Huh. Okay, let's just keep going. Here's the mill again from a different angle. Look at my hands. I'm trying to climb up. Looks like a trail, but it's not. It's sort of fenced off a bit. I don't know. No, I was that much that way. So we'll keep going on this one. We're making a little bit of our way uphill a bit now. So when we get into Castle Bridge, I'll tell you all about the Guinness Book of Records and about the city or the town, and uh, maybe going to shop and get a sausage roll or breakfast roll or chicken roll. Something like that. They have one little supermarket in the town. We'll just keep going uphill. 
They still have these openings every once in a while. You know, I think if they should have a a sign pointing to it or showing it, you know. Someone lost their shoe at the top of the hill. So I think we go right down this way. Smoke helps you mend you where you broke. When Simon says just take the pill, what doesn't kill you makes you well. Google Maps and I had some internet so basically if we kept on that road it'll bring us right in towards the Castle Bridge but I think if we go down here it'll bring us back into the Edenvale so either way did work but we'll see we'll see where this goes because it's something it's all part of Edenvale and we're here to explore Edenvale and all the little hidden treasures I wonder where that bloodstone is hmm. If we're unsuccessful, we might have to do a second trip out here one time. But we haven't given up yet. This is an interesting little footpath. It's like mossy, but it's graded in. It's like stone that has been grooved. So it would be very slick if you didn't have these grooves. Well, here's the cottage that they were talking about, maybe. Maybe the man that has knows about the bloodstone. Wonder if he's there. There's smoke there. Very nice little cottage hidden away here. Wow, this is nice. I'm glad I took this true route. Oh, so that's his car. He gets down there. Nice little cottage. It's a nice little garden there. Look at a little bench to sit in. Wow. I wonder if we should chance our arm if he's home. Maybe I'll give the. Let's go give the door a knock. And I'll see if we can find out. Hopefully, he doesn't get startled. visitors. wonder if it's the right door. Is, it, is that this door? No, that one has cobwebs. Maybe he's asleep. Gone for a siesta. Too bad. I'm sure he would know. Oh well. Nice little cottage he has though. Little piece of heaven. So, you have to have a small car to get up and down those, uh, that little roadway though. Too bad. I don't think we have too much farther to go. Oh, remember that path left or to the right when we were first coming into Eadville? This is what goes here. I think we're going to be joining up and then, yeah, so it shouldn't be too much longer on this little walk we have today. 
very pleasant, but it's not finished yet. Now we're going to go and walk to Castle Ridge. Castle Ridge is about a kilometer away, and then I'll tell you some of the little facts about Castle Ridge. So stay tuned. And if you haven't uh, subscribed to my channel yet, please hit that subscribe button and the bell notification, please. And comment, hit the like button on the videos. It helps for the algorithms to maybe promote my, uh, my channel and get more views. And if you really want to help me out, you can hit the um, membership. It's a small fee of uh, two ninety nine dollars a month. And that gives you access to a special emoji on the live chats it also gives you a little little star beside your name and it gives you access to all vlogs that are coming out and special membership posts and videos so hit that or for a one-time event you can hit the uh, super thanks and donate what you want and it helps me with my uh, my adventures like I'm all self-funding now I am monetized but it's still growing I think I made about 22 euros so far so it's takes a while for that to get going but we'll get there in the end thanks to support for people like you watching these videos yeah here's the gate here's exactly where we are so now we'll just keep on going up here and we'll be back to the start of the trail and then we'll start walking towards Castle Bridge so I'll turn it off for now we started the vlog and now we're walking in towards Castle Bridge Good old Google says it should be a kilometer. So it's very narrow though. I have to fly, a, I think I'm gonna walk facing the traffic, I think. It'd be safer. Maybe after these cars go by, cross over. And after this car, we should be okay to cross. continue on so I'll tell you a little history about Castle Bridge while we walk it in there basically it's five kilometers from Wexford town it's had a huge increase in the last 10 years the population has trebled and is still expanding they're, they're growing more and more estates around it was used to have an old castle and that's where the, the town name came from Castle Bridge but it was uh, taken down and in its place now stands the Church of Ireland there's an interesting fact it's the home the founding place of the Guinness Book of Records. Now, the reason behind that is, in November 10th, in 1951, uh, Sir Hugh Beaver, who was the managing director of the Guinness Brewery, was out hunting, him and his mates. And they had an argument about which bird, uh, which uh, fowl bird is faster. It was the golden plover versus the red grouse. And they argued away, and there, there was nowhere to actually look up and find which one is now the red grouse was the faster bird but that's where they were talking about it and then they came up with the idea with this book of the guinness book of records and i think there is a sign in uh, the town that mentions uh, the guinness book of records you know founding place or whatever but we'll go take a look see what that is but it's an interesting little fact it, it's a it's a large population of a town with has a little bit of an amenities. Now, if you remember my uh, antiques, uh, my antique vlog, where I showed the uh, the antique shops that are around Wexford Town, we were in Castle Bridge for Lowney's uh, Antique Treasure Trove, and we'll be walking right by that building. So I'll show you that. I'll put the link above. If you're watching it on your phone or tablet, you'll be able to click on it and watch that uh, that video, and. Uh, if not, just look look up for my Wexford Town vlogs and you'll see it has it all in there. So we're just walking in towards Castle Bridge. I, if you're ever walking on these windy little roads, I do a lot of walking around. Oh, it's always safer to walk facing the traffic as opposed to the behind you. So also don't put any earbuds in and stuff like that. It's just protection. And if it's in the evening time or whatever, a gray day, use some safety viz jackets it just helps out now we're coming up into uh into march march i have a uh an interesting uh vlog planned 
I'm gonna be hitchhiking for 48 hours. I got two minds. One is just see where we can go for 48 hours, who picks you up and where we end up. Or another one is there's an island up in the north uh, in Antrim, um, Rapkin Island. So I might try, so I'm still there. Maybe comment on which one you'd rather see. A 48 hours of just random uh, hitchhiking or try to hitchhike to this Rathlin Island. Uh, there is a ferry that goes out every day. We can take that over. And they have a, a hostel on the island for like, I think it's 20 pounds or 25 pounds you can stay for the night. So that's another option. So those are two that I'm looking for. So let me know what you want, which one you think is uh, best. I'm, I'm at half lines of each. The 48 hour one sounds cool, but so the goal trying to get up. So we're actually hitchhiking in and from Wexford all the way into Dublin, up to Belfast, up to the coast, and then see what kind of people we meet and who picks us up. That, that just looks looks like an interesting challenge. Plus we'd have a goal in place and then also places to stay maybe. Here we go. Here's the sign I was looking for and we found it. Just don't mind the garbage in front of it. Maybe this could be a thumbnail. There we go. I also have a few other vlog ideas before I go to Azerbaijan. I also want to try to find a, a farming family to uh, spend 24 hours with, just to show what kind of lifestyle a farmer person in Ireland has with their cows and milking or something like that, just to give people an insight of what a farmer in Wexford goes through. Maybe go to a mart and stuff, something like that. And the other option is I wanna go into a muscle boat or crab boat or lobster boat do 24 hours of that, see what that's like, and show you what the, uh, the fishing goes with. Wexford's on a coastal land, and we're known for fishing and mussels, especially mussels. Wexford has a huge mussel. Uh, there's like, if you look at the key front, there's uh, must be about a dozen big uh, mussel trawlers. And it's very sandy out there in the, the bay. And they go, and a lot of those go, I believe I was speaking to someone and I said, a lot of them goes up to like Norway and stuff like Scandinavian countries. But we'll see. They're st still trying to suss out places to do like that. And if you have any other ideas, you know, something that maybe not too expensive, like I've already had the two big, the big uh, adventures planned, but something I could do locally or, and that there'd be, you know, worthwhile seeing and showing what it's like. I'm all, I'm all open for that. And here we come into the Castle Bridge. You see some stones. A lot of the estates around Wexford have these stones and it's uh, engraved in the, the stone. It has the, uh, the estate name and it's usually in Irish. But we'll just keep walking in towards the main town of Castle Bridge. Not too much farther. And we'll go show you the spar. I think it's a spar, a spar or centra. It's like a little restaurant that serves all the community, so. But they usually have a place where you can get uh, snacks and all that. Here we go, here's another. Welcome to Castle Bridge. The birth, the Guinness World Book of Records. Birthplace of. There we go. I'm proud of that fact. And then here's the sign of Castle Bridge. Rock, like I explained, beside the normal county council one. And we have a footpath here, so we'll cross over. These are nice little bushes and that with a stream laying beside it. The house. Now we're on safe ground, so we don't have to dodge cars when we're walking in. I don't see what the point of that was. You know, wasting fuel. Willow view. Right. 
Now I was planning on uh, taking the bus back in. You take the same bus that I had taken to get out here. It goes every hour on the hour. But then I also thought of, might chance my arm maybe, stick the old thumb out. See if I can get picked up. We're only going into, into town. It's five kilometers. So another option is we can walk. It's a beautiful day. I need the exercise, you know. We've been hibernating all winter. Bar when I walked around um, Bulgaria. So we need to start get back into the old outside life walking around. There's a little soccer field. There's, it looks like a, a school, I think. Bridge Rovers. Established in 1971. And then here we're coming into the main intersection. There used to be a big restaurant here on the left. It used to be very popular, just normal breakfast place and that. It was called the Fry and Irishman. Um, it wasn't high-end cuisine, but it was like, you know, it was the only one that was around and it did good, good trade for coffee and stuff. So now a few of the places have shut down. So there's just basically the, that one supermarket I think there's a pub across. They used to have a few restaurants and that, but a few of them have shut down. Uh, probably since COVID. COVID killed a lot of them. And it's also hard to find employees. You know, everyone... You know, there's always ads up for people to work. You know, as waiting staff, baristas. You know, small, uh, small little jobs, but they're very important and vital. So. Turkish social barbers right beside the post office. Here's a nice building. Hot towel shave, haircuts, skin fade, walk ins welcome. There and there's Freddy's post office. And that building in the, the big building right in the end there, that's the um, the antique store I, I showed you in the vlog when I did the antique one. So we'll cross over here. There's the bridge loop, the one we took the last time. Uh, we won't take it now because uh, obviously uh, very nice. We won't take it now because obviously we still have to show Castle Bridge. We'll walk around. Here's a nice little park area. There's some picnic benches up there. So basically, we have an hour in Castle Ridge uh, to kill to catch the bus back if that's what we take. Community garden. Nice bench, but too bad for the rubbish. There's no point in that. Here's a little map of Castle Bridge. Peace Garden, reading rooms, Village Green, Handball Alley, Soccer Pitch, we saw that. Abachi Courts, that was where the school was, we saw that, so the past the garden. So we're right around here, I'd say. And a few other little places to see. We'll just go walk around. And then I'll go into the shop, get myself a drink or something, run across the uh, Mountain Gremlin Games. Gaming place for kids, I think. There's the Forge restaurant, that's all closed now. Life Pharmacy. Chemists do well in Ireland. You see them, they're all over the place. And there's the Flying Irish takeaway, it's been closed down. You see the sign to it? 
and this was where it was. It had a nice big car park, you know. It's a really shame, you know. It's all shut. Like, that would have been nice right now to go in and have a, a breakfast. And then we have the old mill, which is right here. They're all converted into apartments. We'll take a look at that and we'll head back towards the uh, Nounies, the antique shop. Maraid Ceramics and Art. So, there's some local ceramic place here. If you're interested in that, you can look it up online. Never heard of it myself, but there it is right there, the pink heart. And that's right beside the old mill. Which is all flats now. It's a nice old building, eh? And these are washing machines that you can drive up to. There's like an old ent entrance archway. And then their park. And then some more estates there. So we'll cross the we'll block this way. We we'll head towards Lowney's now. I'm we'll gonna turn it off till we get closer to Lowney's. Here are the flying Irishmen, and then here's the stream that goes over. We're on this little bridge, and then we'll cross over after this red car. We should be able to go. So there's a sign, 18 kilometers to Innis 40, across the big four, looks for town, let's keep on going. Which Google Maps said it should be about five kilometers. So here's the treasure trove, just around this big old building. Like there's, I think four stories, three or four stories up. There's the Porter House, and then Emo, there's the Londis, it's a Londis up ahead. And here's the treasure trove that we went in there. I'm just gonna pop my head in now just to say hi. And then we'll go up to the uh, we'll go up to the uh, the convenience store and we'll get something to eat. So I popped in uh, my head and spoke to the owner and asked about business was going. He's very he said it's going good, you know. Uh, there's always stuff, new stuff coming in. It's very important to have places like that where you can, you know, put a little touch in your house you know not everything is this Ikea and that you know it's nice to have some antique furniture you can get them at reasonable rates there too and they deliver locally around so uh, they're very it's very nice service that they provide well it's a business too but I mean I like the old antique furniture it just there's something about it here's an old church so here's the Church of Ireland right here so this is where the castle used to be, where the, name, the village got the name from Castle Bridge. There used to be a castle here, it was torn down for the Church of Ireland. So, here's Lowney's Furniture, that's family store, but that's all modern stuff. I prefer the antique stuff myself. Let me know in the comments, uh, do you prefer the modern furniture or the antique furniture? In my house, I have a whole bunch of antique furniture, wardrobes, and stuff we picked up. A lot of them we picked up from Lowney's. So here's Londis, a little supermarket, and a uh, place where you can get your groceries or milk and sandwich and some beer or something like that, so you don't have to go into town. Like I said, it's even the Chinese, there used to be Chinese there, it's all closed down. So. Hey, you almost got ran over! Let's go inside here, see what it's like. Wow. Kinda hungry. We might get something. Some the Lucas Aids. Coffees. Fruit and veg. It's like a supermarket here. Walk down to the, uh, the hot counter. Uh, 
Oh. Be a boss. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hi. Could I have a, just a white roll with the chicken? Uh, butter and uh, coleslaw, please. Thank you very much. So, four seventy-five for that. I was gonna drink. Let's try this strawberry flavored milkshake. One eighty-five. Hello. Could I have a lotto for tonight too? Yeah, six euro. Or Very much. Okay, now let's go find somewhere to have this. I turn it off now. So it's twelve sixty, but that's including six euros for the lotto. So that would really mean it was. Uh, something for uh, to drink in the, the dinner all right so that's all done and dusted wasn't the best the, the roll was okay but the drink was like gooey ish not my favorite but I hope you've enjoyed this uh, this vlog today a little something different showing you a little town of Castle Bridge and Eden Vale now we were unsuccessful on finding the uh, the bloodstone I asked ton of people even off camera and they all of them said they didn't know about it so I don't know if it's an urban myth but anyways someone in, in uh, the world of Google pulled a funny one or let me know in the comment section if there is an exact uh, bloodstone that's in Edenville here's the town view on the outside the London store was good handy and then now we just have to make our way back in toward into the town of Wexford. Now we'll make ourselves into the town of Wexford and see how I get there, either bus or hitchhike or that. Um, so I'll close off the vlog now and uh, stay tuned for more adventures to come on Celtic Make Walks.